What's up everybody, how's it going? On this channel, I have posted a lot of videos about Google coding interviews. I've done Google coding interviews, I've talked about how to prepare for Google coding interviews, how to land Google coding interviews, but one thing that I haven't really talked about is how exactly a candidate going through a Google coding interview is graded. What is the grading rubric that interviewers at Google and other big tech companies use to grade or score candidates. And so in this video, we are going to demystify all of that because there are a lot of misconceptions and myths online. And so let's dive into it. Now for this, we are going to look at a template that we have on Algo Expert. By the way, if you're preparing for coding interviews, especially to get into a company like Google or any other big tech company, then do check out my company, Algo Expert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. But so on Algo Expert, we have this mock interview feature where you can do mock interviews with other people on Algo Expert. And after you're done with your mock interview, you have to give feedback to your interview partner. And so you go through this feedback form that we have here. And the, the one that I'm looking at right now is a free template that we have. I'll put the link to it in the description and comments below. So you can look at it at your leisure if you want. But so you scroll down uh, through the feedback form and you get to this part, the interviewee feedback with these four main categories under performance. And this form right here, is very, very similar to the form that interviewers at Google and even other big tech companies have access to. Now, of course, there's a little bit of clementization to the form. You know, I wrote this form and I wrote like the descriptions. If you hover over the, the numbers, the various scores for the various categories, but overall it is very, very similar. Now, the first thing that should pop out to you when you see this form is you should realize that it is very, very simple. It's almost like disappointingly simple. If you were expecting to see something here that would make you think like, whoa, I've just seen the secret insider formula to crack any Google coding interview, well, you're going to be disappointed because that's just not the case. This is not rocket science. If anything, this grading rubric that we have in front of us here looks kind of obvious, right? It's kind of, you know, super simple, four categories that kind of make sense, right? Algorithm skills, coding skills, communication skills, and problem solving skills. And that's it. That's all that you're being assessed on, on a four point scale for each category. And just to be clear, this makes a lot of sense because at the end of the day, there's only so many things that an algorithm style coding interview, like the ones that you take at Google, can assess, right? There are only so many things that you, the interviewee, can give signal for when you're taking an algorithmic style coding interview. And these are the four main things. So that's what you're being assessed on. Now let's dive into them to understand more like what they represent, what each of them represents. So we'll start with the, the first of them, algorithms. Algorithms is kind of like the bread and butter, if you will. Um, it's not necessarily more important than the others, but it's you know, the de facto thing that you think about when you think an algorithm style coding interview. And so here, when we talk about algorithms, we really mean how well versed are you with algorithms? Are you able to come up with an optimal solution for the problem that you were given, an optimal algorithm? Do you understand space-time complexity analysis? Do you understand you know, why certain algorithms might perform better than others? Do you understand the trade-offs between algorithms? Are you well-versed in data structures? Do you have a good grasp of what data structures might be good for certain you know, problems and what data structures might not be good for certain problems. That is what we mean by algorithms. And so if we look at the best score for algorithms for, it says the candidate came up with one or multiple optimal algorithms to solve the question. With little to no help from the interviewer, candidate demonstrated a clear mastery of algorithms and data structures. Exactly what I kind of iterated right before. If we look at two here, candidate came up with an algorithm to solve the question, but was unable to solve it optimally despite help from the interviewer viewer, candidate had some gaps in their knowledge of algorithms and data structures. So you kind of get an idea of what this category represents. It's pretty straightforward. And again, I would encourage you to go check out the form and read through all of the scores and all the descriptions at your leisure. So next up, we've got coding. So coding is kind of obvious, right? You're doing a coding interview. So of course, you're going to be assessed on your coding ability. And one thing to keep in mind for coding ability is that in a coding interview, there is only so much coding ability signal that you can give as an interviewee, right? It's not like you're writing a huge project or application with tons of different files or whatever. No, you're writing a very you know, short, all things considered, 
solution to an algorithmic problem. So the things that an interviewer is going to be looking at are going to be things like variable naming. Are you naming your variables descriptively? Are you keeping your code dry? Are you abstracting out repeated logic? Are you um, structuring your code in a way that makes sense? You know, separating out maybe very uh, isolated pieces of logic. Are you using idiomatic syntax for your language? Although here, I will say that, you know, depending on your level, that might be less important. Like if you're a new grad interviewing for an L3 position, I might not really care if you're using unidiomatic JavaScript, for example, but still these are things to keep in mind. And so the best score for coding ability here, candidate effortlessly transcribed an algorithm into working and readable code, candidate abstracted repeated logic into helper methods, named variables descriptively, and used idiomatic language syntax. Exactly what I just said. Now the third thing is going to be communication. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Are you communicating well? Am I the interviewer? able to follow you as you go through the interview? Are you communicating what you're doing to me, what you're thinking to me? You know, if you're considering multiple approaches to a problem, are you telling me why you're considering them? Are you telling me that you are considering them? Because sometimes people, they're going to think of three different approaches, but they're not going to tell me the interviewer, and that's not good. And then finally, the fourth uh, category here is problem solving. So problem solving is a little bit nuanced. I think a lot of candidates uh, kind of conflate it with algorithms because it is kind of tied to algorithms, but it is a little bit different. Problem solving is more about how you approach the problem. Do you approach it in a way that is sound, that conveys that you're a good problem solver, or is it a little bit all over the place? For example, do you ask clarifying questions? Do you consider multiple approaches? When you consider multiple approaches or consider using you know, various data structures, do you explain their trade-offs? Do you think about why one might be better than the other? Do you voice that to your interviewer? If the problem that you're solving lends itself to being solved in, in sub-problems, you know, maybe it has one logical kind of isolated part and then a second isolated part, do you solve them separately or do you just kind of jump into them uh, without really thinking about it? Do you test your code at the very end? Do you proactively explain to your interviewer how you would test your code? These are all good ways to indicate that you are a good problem solver, and so that's what they're looking at for this category. Now, two things to note here. The first one is that while these are the main categories that you're really graded on, there are a few others. So for example, you know, there might be things like leadership or at Google, there's this one category called thrives under ambiguity. These are a little bit more nuanced. They're harder to assess in a coding interview. If the interviewer is able to get signal for them, they'll fill them out. But overall, for you, the candidate, I would not really be too worried about those when you're doing a coding interview, not systems design or behavioral, right? We're talking about coding interviews. For coding interviews, I would really just worry about these main four categories. These are the obvious ones that are supremely important and that will make or break you in an interview. And of course, things like are you respectful? You know, here at, at the template, we've got the first question was, or second one, was this person respectful and professional? That's obviously super important. But so then the second thing to notice is that there are only four scores for these categories, and I say only because some people expect some kind of fancy grading scheme like, oh, this is out of like 17 points. Like, no, it's not fancy. And again, this is this makes sense. This is not rocket science. The reason it's out of four points is because if you graded this out of, I don't know, 10 points, what would really differentiate a seven from an eight? You know, not much, right? Or it would be much harder to kind of explain, you know, the difference between a seven and an eight. So here, this makes a lot of sense. And again, I would highly encourage you to go check out the template so you can read all the descriptions and kind of get an idea of what a two versus a three versus a one uh, means. Now, before I jump into what scores you probably want to aim for as a candidate, let's talk about the final score, because at the end of the interview, once the interviewer has filled out this form, there is a final score. This is sort of the decision, the hiring decision that the interviewer is giving the hiring committee for you. And so here it's out of six, and this one is one that's pretty like famous. You've probably heard about it online. You've probably even heard jokes of a you know strong no hire or strong hire. But so yes, you've got six uh, hiring decisions, strong no hire, no hire, leaning no hire, leaning higher, higher, strong hire. And here they kind of speak for themselves. Strong hire means that the interviewer 
really thinks you should be hired. They would almost fight for you to be hired if they had to defend their position. Strong no hire is going to be the opposite of that. And then everything in between, you, know, you can use your judgment or look at the descriptions on Algo Expert to understand what they represent. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about in this video, which I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, is how many or what combination of these scores, you know, how many strong hires, how many leaning hires do you need to actually get hired at Google? Because remember, when you're going through Google coding interviews or any big tech company interviews, you go through typically four to five on-site interviews. And at each of those, you are going to get one of these scores. And then how many or what, you know, uh, combination of scores here in this performance chart do you need to get an individual final score? And so here, unfortunately, if you're expecting some kind of, you know, super scientific formula for this, well, again, you're going to be disappointed because here it's much more an art than a science. So first of all, looking at the performance, it's very hard to tell, you know, what combination of scores you need here to get, for example, a strong hire. I would say the rule of thumb, and this will make sense once you read the actual you know, individual descriptions, but the rule of thumb is, as a candidate, you are hoping to get only threes and fours. Once you dip into the twos, the twos are a little bit negative, and the ones are not good. You don't want to have any ones. So threes and fours are good. Ideally, you get more fours than threes, you know, at least like two fours. But again, this is much more art than science. Some candidates might be extremely good at three categories and they might get fours in three categories, but then a two in the fourth category. For example, it's very common to see someone really good at algorithms, coding, and problem solving, but not amazing at communication, or really good at algorithms and problem solving and communication, but really bad at coding. Like they can't transcribe their algorithm into working code. Or even some people are really good at algorithms, coding, and communication, but bad at problem solving because they don't really explain how they got to the solution. And typically, in that case, they'll also be kind of poor in communication. The point is, there's so many different possible combinations of these scores, and depending on the actual interview and the interviewer, it's hard to say you know, what combination is going to be the best. Obviously, four fours is the ideal, but then it's hard to say what maps to what final score. Overall, again, if you only have threes and fours, you're likely going to be between a leaning higher, higher, or strong higher. And so then here in the final scores, obviously the, the higher your score, the better. So like if you've got only strong hires, that's gonna be the best. But unless you do get only strong hires or conversely only strong no hires, unless you only get these two scores, it's very hard to say whether or not you know, your combination of scores is gonna map to or end up being a hire decision or a no hire decision from the actual hiring committee because there's so much again art that goes into the hiring committee process where they review your four or five on-site interview scores and as an example you know someone might get let's say three hires one strong hire so you would think oh my god this is amazing but then one strong no hire and that might actually cost them the entire you know, position because the strong no hire might be just very convincing. For example, if all of the hires and strong hires that you got all told the hiring committee that you had great communication, great problem solving, but not amazing coding, like you were great at everything, but not amazing at coding. And then the strong no hire said that you were really terrible at coding. So clearly there's a clear sign that you're bad at coding, that could push the hiring committee over the edge, even though you had a bunch of hires. Now, conversely, imagine you had, you know, four hires and one strong no hire, and the strong no hire said that you were terrible at communication, but then all of the hires said that you were great at communication. They only gave you four. That would make the hiring committee look into the person who gave you a bad communication score, try to understand it better, and maybe you know there would be some kind of red flag from the interviewer. Maybe the interviewer isn't experienced. I don't know, I'm just you know, throwing ideas here, but the point is you could still end up getting hired there despite having a strong no hire. It really depends. It's impossible to know. It's also impossible for you, the candidate, to know what score you got. You'll never know this. Even when you get into Google later, you'll never know your actual interview 
three scores. So overall, it's not something that I would really worry about. It's not something that I would try to prepare for. The only thing that you should prepare for is or are algorithms, coding, communication, problem solving, and even there, overall, nothing I've said in this video is gonna really help you crack the interviews better. The only thing that hopefully will have done is giving you a bit of peace of mind that these interviews aren't rocket science. They're pretty straightforward. You're assessed on pretty simple or straightforward things, all things considered. And these are the four things. Now, go prepare for your interviews, practice, use Algo Expert, promo code CLAMCLEM for discount on the platform, and get into Google or any other big tech company. I hope that this video was helpful. Hopefully it was insightful. If it was, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content, Instagram if you like pictures, and otherwise I will see you in the next video.